everybody, this is Kodok here, back with more Wave 3, although something I forgot to mention last time with the Gortheon review is that it actually came with a Wave 4 checklist. Honestly, that's uh, my bad, you guys. And the reason that I'm calling it the Wave 4 checklist is because it has on it a ton of Bakugan that we have yet to see. Like, up here we have the Webum Ultra and the Pegatrix Ultra, which uh, did not come out with the Wave 3 Bakugan. Which is something we're going to get to take a look at in the future. Of course, we have some other things I haven't gone over yet. I haven't gone over Tertonium Ultra, well, until now. And uh, the uh, Dragonoid Ultra, which I've been I've been looking for really hard. Because all of the stores in my local area have re have stocked on Wave 3, except Ultras. That Gort that, the, 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 the core Ultras, that one Gortheon I found was a streak of luck. Um, we also have some core Bakugan down here that I haven't shown off. We have... Uh, Cindy's core, which I did get some shots of at Toy Fair, and Tertonium core. Although, the thing about Tertonium core is it's currently only in the big chunky five packs, and they're like the only thing in there that I need. So that might get to wait until I can get it in a, uh, a smaller set. But uh, to be fair, I have said in the past that uh, even these products that I'm looking at today, you're either saving $4 or you're wasting $13. With those... Uh, with those five packs, you're either saving twenty eight dollars, you're either saving twenty dollars, or you're wasting like uh, twenty dollars. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's nice to see this checklist. I don't know why Fangs or Ultra didn't come on this checklist. In fact, it came on a checklist that didn't even have it included. That was just weird. But anyway, it's nice to see that we we're caught up. So let's get back to what we were here for before. The Darkest Tertonium Bakugan Starter Pack. Now, this one, it's uh, it, it's pretty much, to my understanding, the only way to really get your hands on a Tertonium Ultra at the moment. I don't think it's in any solo packs, and I haven't seen it in any of the five packs, so right now I think this is the only way to get it, and um, fortunately this is probably the best one, because it comes with a very powerful evolution card in Bakugan Resurgence that allows you to put out a very powerful and very damaging Bakugan very early on at the cost of your whole hand. Oh no, Darkest, oh no, what will I ever do with all these China Riots and Shadow Coils that I have to discard in order to play it. Anyway, the rest of the pack, the reason I held off on this one is because the rest of the contents aren't terribly exciting. We have Auralis Mantanoid, which if I remember actually has like really terrible stats for an Auralis, and Chaos Pegatrix, who I've again had three times on this channel, just like Auralis Nilius. So, uh, anyway, taking a look here, it is still says Battle Brawlers on the side. I imagine that'll change once we, uh, get into wave five and onwards. I imagine it'll say uh, resurgence once we get some Bakugan that are in the resurgence sets. That uh, that might be, and that might even be as soon as wave four. We'll have to find out, or it's probably gonna be wave three. And then we have um, the uh, Bakugores down here. It comes with six, the uh, fist and the um, shield. And uh, Tertonium's eyes, man, they just really stand out for some reason. They, uh, they colored them yellow, unlike the rest of the the body on here. It looks like he's seen something, man. Like, I'm looking at the card art for Tertonium, and he looks like he's got, like, this thousand-yard stare. What is it? Like, Mectanium Surge flashbacks? Anyway, it says Complexity Level 1. Uh, we'll see if it's uh, as simple a slinky design as Fangzor, or one that you can literally just kind of squeeze shut with your single hand, like with Gorthion Ultra. But anyway, first, a quick look at the back. And yes, we have Darkest Tertonium, although... He has no pupils on his picture here. Oh, oh gosh, he's possessed. No. Um, we, of course, have the uh, challenge one. We have the other two over here. We have the list of cores, the cards. One Bakugan Ultra, two Bakugan, six Baku cores, three ability cards, and three character cards. One thing I noticed is, uh, yeah, like I said, it, it kind of feels like the the Ultras are seriously outpopulating the core because we have currently... 16 Ultras to 11 Core. I worry that they might... If they weigh the Ultras too heavy, it's going to be a bit expensive to try to collect all of them for. Like, we don't even have, like, a regular equivalent for Garganoid or Webum or Krakelios. So, mm, Or Howl Core or Maxator. That's a... I think there might be a Core Maxator at some point, but uh, that's a long ways off if it does exist. Uh, anyway... Moving on, let's get this thing open. Oh yeah, look at that the bottom there. They only have like the back of storage in the battle arena. Apparently there's a gonna be a new battle arena that features a uh, a Pyrus Phaedrus. That's gonna be interesting. Hopefully they'll have some Baku storage. Hopefully they'll have uh, the the green uh, the green, white, and yellow Baku storage that we're hoping for coming out in wave four or wave five. Anyway, now let's get this thing open. No hope. This one's a a wave one sheet two. Although I guess. 
all of these characters are on the Wave 1 sheet, so uh, I guess that's fair enough. Of course, it also comes with the rules, but here are the contents of our um, Tertonium Ultra starter set. It comes with, of course, Tertonium Ultra here, who uh, has a card, 503, roughly par, comes with Magic Shield and Fist. A very, very chunky boy on the image there. We got a quick little look at his shell here. Comes with the uh, plus 600B Magic Shield and the plus 100B Darkest and Aquos plus 3 damage fist. So, pretty, pretty basic kit. Nothing truly spectacular. There's a, a stronger Magic Shield than this. Um, but it's kind of weird that they packed that one in since uh, there aren't any Aquos in the set. Um, we, of course, have Pegatrix. You know where you love her. You've uh, seen her several times on this show already. Um, comes with the standard plus 150B plus 1 and the plus 100B Pyrus and Chaos plus 3, the one that comes in all of her sets. Um, interestingly, though, um, it actually came with the Wing Cutter card. This is kind of what I'm talking about. If, if they did this more often with the sets, maybe not the best cards, but from an aesthetic point of view, if each of these Bakugan, even the core ones as well, came with, like, a copy of their, like, like a move, uh, an ability card that has a picture on them, uh, like them showing off their signature move, it would add a lot more flavor to the packs. That's just my opinion, and I'm really happy that they decided to do that with Wing Cutter here. Um, Auralis Mantanoid, on the other hand, is really bad. Now, Auralis Bakugan, in general, have like two additional stat points to throw around, so this thing is a 301, that means it would be a 101 in any other attribute. Um, for something that gets you just a magic shield and a regular shield, that is... That's not impressive for any attribute. What, is it like the, the, uh, Pyrus, uh, Howlcorn, and it gets, like, some sort of amazing evolution to make up for that? No, it... it doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, why does this thing even exist? Um, of course we have the, uh, regular Mantanoid build, which is a nice build, in the, uh, Auralis, uh, RNG gold, which is nice. It does kind of help the, uh... The details pop a bit, similar to how uh, Chaos works. Comes with a uh, fairly lackluster minus 400 and plus 150 on the on the on the Magic Shield and the regular Shield. And of course, the uh, cards we get packed in, we get Wing Cutter, which is actually a terrible card. It's six energy for plus 600. When you can get like, uh, there's another card that gives you like plus 900 for the cost of just four. Um, and, but if you're dominating, you get to return it to your hand. Not so great for a six cost card. Not a lot of great six cost cards in general. Um, we have Tainted Touch, which actually is a very good card in a Darkest deck. It's the uh, it's the thing I would use instead of Might of Night if we can't find enough copies of those. Because what it does is two energy for plus two damage, which is, you know, terrible. Literally every attribute has something better than that, but the idea is if you sacrifice, you can discard a card to make that plus seven damage, which only pushes it one step above the curve. Like, a high damage card um, for a high damage attribute like Darkest is usually going to be, like, cost three for seven damage, but what Tainted Touch does is you're supposed to combo that with Shadow Coil. You discard Shadow Coil to pay for the sacrifice effect, and then it becomes two energy for 11 damage. That's... That's a lot of pain all at once. That's how you're supposed to use Tainted Touch. So, it actually does have a pretty interesting effect if you combine it with Shadow Coil or even China Riot. Although, China Riot's gotten a little outmoded by a lot of other cards that essentially do the same thing. And then we have Repel Outsiders, which is the, uh, the generic Ventus stop everything non-Ventus. Now, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Auralis uh, Dragonoid that I was talking about before, the Auralis Titan Dragonoid, which um, becomes all attribute, does not get stopped by this card because it counts as Ventus along with all of its attributes. What I meant was like all the really cheap ones like Halt Unknown or uh, even like Stop Pyrus or any of those kinds of cards would, would stop the, uh, the Auralis, the Titan Dragonoid, which is why I brought that up as being, you know, not that good because all the cheap stops stop it. So if I continue to run Halt Unknown in my Chaos deck, which I'm gonna because of all the aggro decks that use... Uh, that use uh, all the decks that people are using use Darkest and Aquos, so that would stop that as well. Um, anyway, let's move on to uh, the look of Tertonium Ultra. Like I said, we've already seen these guys on the show three times, which is why I was reluctant to pick up this pack at first. All right, looking at Tertonium Ultra, we see that uh, it is another Ultra that is nice and round. That's nice. Um, I mean, we have like the crazy ones like Dragonoid Ultra and Fangzor Ultra that are all 
all over the place, but we've been getting some more of these ones that are nice and round, and nice and round is the way I like it. It, of course, still has the central tire, like you can see on the reflections there. I guess that, that's nice. It makes a, a central tire nice and visible when I, I use the reflections like that. But uh, you can see that it uh, has the magnet on the top of the shell, and the shell has the nice, you know, standard uh, turtle shell, um, or I guess it would be tortoise shell, you know, patterning on it with those uh, those sort of hexagon shapes there. It is a little bit broken up by the joints, but I guess that's to be expected. It is, of course, that nice uh, dark black punctuated with the purple, although we get to the nice green that really stands out against the uh, black when we get down here. Very, very nice detail on the feet, by the way. It's not easy to get that nice pop on the green there, and the fact that they broke it up into the lines makes it much more visually striking, although we have the head right here and those incredibly traumatized looking eyes there. It's like, you know, like those weird sonic forces, like super scary eyes. And uh, here are the safety screws, although when this thing unfolds, this is technically the bottom, so these screws are going to be completely hidden when it opens up. Uh, we have the uh, front legs and the back legs. The front legs, as you can see, have a lot more of the uh, the purple on them than the back legs, a lot more of the, the detail as well. That's, again, the, uh, the uh, idea of uh, putting your best foot forward. And we have... Uh, when you look at him, you can kind of see, uh, he kind of looks like Darmanitan Zen mode when he's all folded up like this, especially with his head uh, folded over. It looks like he's all, he's like scrunched himself into a ball. It's like, I hope they don't see me. Um, but uh, yeah, nice design, nice and round, nice and Bakugani. That's, it's like how I like my Lego sets to look all Lego-y. I like my Bakugan to look all Bakugani. And aside from these little, I mean, there's like some tiny little protrusions above the screws, but that's like barely, worth noting. Neat. He sort of does like a little inverted somersault in order to stand up like that and strikes a very, you know, down low, like, uh, you you ready to go, man? You, you ready to freaking go stance? I, I like it. Um, although, if you roll it a bit softer, I actually managed to get it to bounce, come down, and pick up both cores, and that is actually considered a legal play, so this boy be dangerous. It can... It can be a very aggressive play if it manages to bounce up and uh, land on multiple cores, because as it clearly demonstrates, it definitely has the strength to pick all of them up. Um, of course, we have our standard, uh, our standard, you know, center piece of pretty much all the Bakugan Ultras. It has the, uh, the, the loaded spring box, although I'm going to have to open that up again, because that's how it locks down. You just have to push down on it, so I can't really show you that spring mechanism too well, but... Uh, it does make him look a little bit funny with his shell kind of in the air like that. The regular Tertonium has, uh, he just has the legs that kind of come out of his shell. In this case, he kind of looks like he's, uh, he's like a double-decker bus turtle. That's kind of funny. Of course, he has those, those eyes. My god, those are, you know, those eyes, they, they just, they, they, they're, they're scary, man. Um, and they're also the only yellow on here. I don't think we've been seeing a lot of yellow on the, the darkest characters. I've been... I thought it was all the uh, the purple and then the citrus green in order to stand out, but the eyes are a different color. Um, looking around, he is all spread out. We have the uh, the tail here. We have the the spring. It's a it's a bit ugly, but otherwise, you know, it's it's a nice all around thing. It's mainly because of that uh, that impact shield. Although the way he uh, sort of folds and unfolds, it actually reminds me of a Bakugan called Fencer from the New Vestroya series, which folded up the same way. I'll show you how it folds up in a bit, but uh, yeah, I mean, we have some safety screws here, but for the most part, it does a pretty good job of keeping all that stuff covered up. The, uh, the, uh, the B power is actually on the bottom here, hidden underneath the head. The head, which I forgot to mention, is actually colored on the bottom here. This is, uh, it, it's, it's interesting that they went out of the way to color the bottom of something that you're really not going to be seeing that often. It's the same with the regular Tertonium, from what I can tell, although in the case of the regular Tertonium, the head folds up in a way that you actually still see the colored bottom. So if you see like something like, like a weird colored flap sticking out of it, that's probably going to be a core Tertonium. Anyway, I like this guy. He's got, uh, he's got, uh, <laughs> those eyes just keep drawing my attention. He, he definitely draws a lot of attention with the eyes there, but um, it's a nice round Bakugan Ultra. It can either roll forward to uh, to uh, strike a battle position, or it can uh, 
it can bounce in the air and pick up multiple cores to uh, cause even more damage. This thing is gonna be frightening in the meta game once the the meta with resurgence gets rolling and people are able to pull this thing's evolution. This is gonna be a gonna be a force to be reckoned with, especially with Fury decks. There, apparently, there's been a lot of Fury decks that use cards like Jenkins to do burn damage, and this thing, its evolution. It gives you a powerful monster at the cost of discarding your hand, which activates all those dangerous fury effects. This guy is going to be one to look out for. Um, anyway, to fold him up, you, like I said, it's like Fencer from the original game. You fold up his limbs into a ball like this, although you also fold in his tail and his head. And then, easy peasy. Very, very simple one. They actually, uh, actually kind of reminds me that uh, in Japan, they actually made a separate scale, a different complexity scale, that goes from one to five, and Howlcore is a four. I'm not sure where Garganoid is on there. I, I said that would be like a complexity four, maybe even a complexity five. But uh, yeah, anyway, that is uh, a look at Tertonium Ultra. It's uh, a very, very fun, another very, very fun design, and one that I think is going to have a role in the game going forward. Hopefully, uh, next time I will be able to get my hands on a Hyper Dragonoid, uh, not a Hyper Dragonoid, well, Hyper Dragonoid is apparently getting a toy too, and it's gonna be, there's gonna be one in the house, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna try to find a, uh, a Dragonoid Ultra, and I'll see if I can find some more interesting stuff in the future. Anyway, until next time, this is Kodak signing off.